Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shandana from the Department of MBA, International Business Management Studies, Acharya Nagarjuna University. And coming to today's topic, it is related to the methods of training and development program. Okay, so in previous class, we have studied about what is training, okay, what were the features of training, importance of training, and now coming to methods of training okay so what are the methods of training so before going to uh, methods of uh, training just we'll have a introduction regarding training okay so training means it may be considered as a key input for developing manpower in an organization why because it improves their job performance so Training is needed in every organization. Okay. So why? Because <coughs> training, it changes what employees knows, how they work, their attitude towards the work or their interaction with their co-workers or with supervisors. Okay. So basically training, it involves changing of skills, knowledge, attitudes, social behavior, etc. Okay. So, <clears throat> to impart training to the employees, several methods were used and programs were developed in organizations. Okay. So, these methods and programs vary from organization to organization. All organizations may not apply the same methods. Okay. So, if we see here, we have different methods. Vestibule training, on-the-job training, off-the-job training. Okay. So, uh, each every organization will not use all these training methods okay it depends upon the organization okay it depends upon uh, categories of personnel to whom training is provided and the object for which training is given okay fully it depends upon the purpose of the organization objective of the organization and how the persons were work, working in the uh, organizations they have okay the categories they have uh, in the organization and <clears throat> since the usefulness of training methods also varies every organization has to select training methods and programs keeping in view its suitability usefulness and training requirements and objectives okay these are the uh, things that have to be uh, maintained by the organizations for the application of different training techniques or methods for their organizations okay suitability is it suited suits for the organization and usefulness to what extent it is useful to the organization and what are the requirements training requirements and finally what were the objectives of the organization so depending upon all these factors we have to go for the uh, techniques or methods of training okay now uh, training is closely related with education and development okay so <clears throat> the most commonly used methods of training are vestibule training on the job training of the job training okay so here <clears throat> again these trainings uh, techniques were again divided into if we take <clears throat> vestibule training so again it is divided into lecture method practical method and if we see on the job training means coaching under study job rotation creation of assistant position temporary position delegation of authority refresher training and apprenticeship so these are all the uh, <coughs> sub concepts that were involved on the job training coming to off the job training so under of the job training these are all the different methods like lectures conferences case study syndicate method simulation training sensitivity training okay on uh, on the top of this sensitivity training is very very important uh, method in of the job training okay now we'll see each and everything okay if we go for vestibule training so what does vestibule training means <coughs> so uh, vestibule training is it is also known as a training okay training center training center training it can be known as center training okay 
so uh, <coughs> under this method the employees are trained at a separate training center called vestibule okay so the employees okay where they take the training so that place that center is known as vestibule okay so <coughs> Such, uh, such training center is specifically set up within the plant itself to train the employees okay so there the machines plant and machinery so the working tools everything will be provided in in such centers okay so <clears throat> machines and tools are also arranged in the training center so as to create working conditions similar to those in the workshop means the actual job uh, they will perform in the plant okay so actual job conditions are duplicated or else simulated in vestibule or training centers okay so if we want to say in one word what is vestibule training means there will be a training center okay in that training center actual job conditions okay the actual job conditions are duplicated okay or simulated in training centers so vestibule training is more suitable for those situations in which large number of employees are to be trained at the same time for the same kind of work so as we are providing a separate center okay a place to give training for the trainees so definitely uh, the organizations with large number of uh, employees where it needs more training means the requirement of training is needed for large organizations means so such type of organizations can avail this vestibule training facilities okay and a lot of expenditure is also incurred for creating the working conditions which are similar to actual work environment okay so we know that vestibule training means it is duplication of the job condition actual job condition therefore definitely we have to uh, create a place a work environment according to the jo actual job conditions so it incurs definitely a lot of expenditure okay and vestibule training uh, consists of two parts one is lecture method other one is practical exercise so if we go to uh, lecture method means uh, uh, we can say that lecture method which is conducted in classrooms meant for this purpose okay <clears throat> the lecture method focuses on theoretical framework and principles involved in the job performance okay so lecture method means so definitely uh, lecture or else um, a class will be given uh, a theoretical class okay uh, theoretical framework regarding the principles and concepts okay can be explained to the trainees in that workplace okay according to the job involved according to the actual job position okay how to perform all these will be explained in the theoretical framework and the principles regarding those work okay and coming to practical exercise so practical exercise means <clears throat> it is based on the theoretical aspects in a workshop so practically they will work on this theoretical framework here they will study the theory and this theory will be uh, practically applied here okay in practical exercise okay plan uh, action plan can be seen in this practical exercise okay but which is dependent upon the theoretical framework and principles okay and for providing vestibule training experts and specialist instructors may either hire from outside the organization or within the organization so we we need definitely the trainers okay for trainees so the trainers may be within the organization or else we can hire our organization may hire from outside the organization also okay so the employees being given training may fully concentrated in the learning process okay they are free from routine work problems and pressures why because they are working not within the plant or not within the organization okay 
somewhere else this place this vestibule training center will be there so uh, we can say that they the trainees they will not feel any work pressure regarding the organization okay so <clears throat> work environment work problems and pressures will not be there routine daily work problems okay so they will be fully concentrated on the learning process in this workshop okay so by providing a uh, vestibule training the employees are prepared to take up challenges and face problems in real work settings okay so vestibule training will be uh benefited the trainers will be benefited in such a way okay they can face any problems why because they are taking training okay uh, on all ways on all methods okay and if we uh, see the advantages regarding the vestibule training means what will be the advantages means here uh, training means both the organization as well as the employee will be benefited here okay but here if we go for the trainee aspects okay first one is emphasizes okay emphasizes on providing training okay so this is the advantage means it places more emphasis on providing training to the employees rather than okay rather than getting more production so organization it uh, emphasizes it's uh, it stresses on providing training to employees okay it is more concerned about the training of employee not more on production so concern for production is less compared to concern for training okay so definitely it will be useful in training aspect to employees okay so if employee is more trained more knowledge more skills more abilities gained means definitely it increases the productivity of the organization which results in the profits of the organization okay and coming to second one second advantage is recover from initial nervousness okay so the employees getting training also gets an opportunity to get accustomed okay to work routine and recover from their initial nervousness before going to actual work setting okay so before going to the uh, work okay the actual work that they have to perform no so before that only they are accustomed okay they are habituated to do the work in training only so how to do the work what is the process so uh, what were the hindrances that can be seen in that process okay what were the responsibilities what is the role how to perform so all these can be studied in training so the initial nervousness will be not seen by provide by training okay and coming to the third one so avoids inconvenience okay so inconvenience means um it uh, avoids the inconvenience of on the job training and as a result um, the employee can be trained within short period of time okay so <clears throat> within a short period of time means so as the trainee remains free from confusion and pressure okay uh, of the work situation definitely uh, he is able to concentrate on learning okay so learning means definitely it increases the abilities and knowledge of the person so ultimately which results in the increase in the productivity of the organization okay now coming to does not interfere with the regular production okay so does not interfere with regular production means as the training center is at another place they are no not any way related to the present organization working condition actual job working condition okay so they are not interfering any way in in this organization they are away from the uh, original organization they are from away from the uh, organization training center will be another okay so therefore uh, the involvement or the interference of them in this organization will not be there okay so vestibule training method does not interfere with the uh, regular production in course of training being imparted because the executive or supervisors are not disturbed by untrained uh, employees okay so 
untrained employees uh, means they will not disturb these executives or supervisors who are working in the actual organization okay why because the uh, uh, these people will be at some place okay if at all there were any confusions means they will solve in that training center only they will not come here and they will not ask in this organization's executives or supervisors okay so in that way interference will be not there in regular production now coming to last one saves machines from damage okay so this method also saves costly machines okay uh, from uh, being damaged by mishandling of untrained workers okay if at all we are not providing any training means so definitely uh, by coming uh, directly to the job position uh, they are not accustomed to that uh, to those machines means definitely uh, at any point of time they may damage the machines costly machines okay so through training means definitely they come to know about the uh, working of the machine how to work with that machine so uh, this uh, saves the cost of the machine okay so the damage of the machines okay uh, the damages of machines cannot be seen if at all the persons are taken training regarding that working of machines okay so vestibule training is uh, we can say that these are the advantages so wherever advantages we also see the disadvantages also or the limitations okay so uh, vestibule training is not free from limitations so this means the method of training is also costly why because uh, costly means definitely uh, we, we are not giving uh, training within the organization a center or a separate place is there for training so definitely uh, we have to incur a place for it okay infrastructure facilities the persons, the trainers to the trainers, the machineries, tools for all that investment should be made. So definitely uh, vestibule training is costly. Okay. So a number of machines are to be purchased also for this purpose. Instruct instructors are required to impart training. So uh, small organizations may not afford this type of training. Okay. So this method of training adds nothing to production during the training period. Uh, so this is also a loss. Why? Because uh, they are doing only training. So in training process, we will not see any production. Okay. So definitely it will be a disadvantage or limitation. And the artificial atmosphere usually created with this type of training uh, does sometimes create adjustment problems for trainees also. Okay. So next one is coming to west after completing vestibule training this is all about vestibule training okay and after vestibule training we'll go for on the job training so this is the second method another method which is in the training and development program okay so on the job training means it is also known as internal training okay so on the job training method is considered um, more effective and suitable for providing training to the personnel uh, working at uh, operative uh, level of organization okay so it is the most widely used and accepted method of training and it is suitable for all levels of employees and workers supervisors and executives so that's why we have uh, said that um, this will be more effective and suitable for operative level of organization okay so under this method employee gets training on the job okay and at his workplace itself okay at his workplace itself he will get the training okay so it means within the job within the organization employee is going to get the training facilities okay so this method of training enables him to be trained under the same working conditions with the same process and materials and equipments which he used for performing assigned job okay so on the job training means so the trainee he he do the uh, he, he takes the training within the job position which is assigned to him okay so the working conditions or else the process the materials and the equipments which are to be used in performing the assigned job all will be here provided in this training program okay so 
he can be accustomed to that job position how to do that job okay assigned job and this method of training is less expensive and less time consuming also why because the employees get trained side by side with the performance of regular job here okay if we see in vestibule training means uh, the performance of, if the employee is performing here means the center will be here okay so uh, here if we see here means the employee performs in the same organization he does the work in the same organization and at the same time he will take training in the uh, same organization in the same place okay so side by side so it is more effective in the sense that training is provided by immediate superior who has a formal authority over the employees and also this method is also very very simple okay so the trainee learns while he actually engaged in doing a job uh, while he performs a job and at the same time he is also learning the um, learning the uh, job also okay so therefore it is known as we can say that it is learning by doing why because at one point of time here he is doing the work and at the same time he is taking the training regarding the assigned job so we can say that on the job training learning by doing okay so we can say on the job training as a major technique okay so under on the job training there are different methods so first one is coaching so what does coaching means coaching is a learning through on the job experience okay so in coaching superior teaches job knowledge okay superior he teaches the job knowledge and skills to the subordinates emphasizing on learning by doing okay so the problems arising during training are solved by the coach okay coach or the superior okay who may be superior or other expert called from outside the organization okay and this method is less formalized okay so under uh, coaching we will see in each and every aspect under training so as we have trainee there will be trainer also so that trainer may be the superior okay or else the expert and he may be from outside the organization also okay but he imparts skills and knowledge to the trainees okay experience skills knowledge okay he will impart those to the trainees okay and also if at all the problems arise during training okay they are solved by the coach okay and coming to second one under study okay under study means under this method superior imparts training to subordinates at his under study okay so under study means the subordinate chosen for under study is considered as the head of superior okay and the purpose is to prepare him to fill the vacancy caused by death retirement transfer or promotion of superior okay so in under study method we can say that trainee is to work with superior who is holding job currently for some period of time with a purpose to get known to the job so normally this method is applied by industrialists to develop their family members or sponsored candidates to develop for occupying key positions in the organizations concerned okay for that purpose under study will be helpful so definitely here superior will be there okay uh, he will uh, he will select the uh, subordinate okay so he, this subordinate will learns from the superior okay <clears throat> and also for example this can be mainly seen in family members so the next hair we can see okay the ne the next family member who is going to be the next chairperson so that that member will learn about the things okay regarding for example if he is going to be the next director of the company so he will definitely learn how what were the roles and responsibilities how to increase the uh, uh, skills and abilities so how to solve the problems so all this can be uh, studied under the subordinate under the superior under this under study okay now coming to job rotation so on the job rotation this technique of uh, on the job training is adopted for uh, broadening work experience of the trainee in various related positions okay so that is known as a uh, job rotation 
means various job positions will be uh, worked by the trainee okay worked by the employee so because he he is to work on different jobs by rotation generally the trainee is uh, rotated periodically from one job to another with a view to uh, provide working knowledge okay so in order to provide working knowledge on various job positions okay why job rotation is there so definitely to provide working knowledge of various related jobs okay this uh, uh, on the job training will be provided okay so this method is also called as channel method of development okay <clears throat> and coming to fourth one creation of assistant to position so creation of assistant to position means so in this method we can see that junior personnel is made assistant okay to senior personnel so junior person will be assistant to the senior person so uh, this here the senior personnel um, he will command he will guide the junior personnel okay the senior personnel is required to provide job related information and experience to this junior personnel or uh, one has to increase the level of knowledge why why because means in order to increase the knowledge the work experience okay the skills and abilities uh, abilities regarding to that particular work he has to work under the senior personnel okay and coming to temporary promotion next one so promotion means advancement in the position okay advancement means for example um assistant manager coming uh, becoming a manager junior accountant uh, becoming senior accountant likewise so here but that promotion is not permanent here okay in on the job training that is a temporary promotion only okay so here junior executives or ma non managerial employees okay uh, junior executives or non managerial employees may be given promotion on purely temporary basis okay by pro by promoting them to higher position they are provided a chance to acquire needed skills knowledge and ability to handle that position okay so for that uh, purpose this temporary promotion is given in on the job training okay so in order to work uh, properly effectively okay in order to enhance the skills needed acquired uh, skills knowledge and ability in order to handle the position okay for that purpose on temporary basis this uh, promotion is given okay and uh, another one is delegation of authority so delegation of authority means uh, power is um, or uh, the authority is transferred to the subordinates okay so delegation of authority uh, at all levels of uh, managers serves as an important tool we can say that here why because uh, to make them trained regarding the job assigned okay because they are given enough formal rights for solving problems and making decisions so delegation of authority is necessary why because they they have to take decisions in training period a formal right is given by the organization in order to take decisions problems solving okay so delegation of authority it plays an important tool okay in on the job training now coming to this is another method of training also okay so now coming to refresher training so refresher training means um, we can say that why refresher training means rapid scientific and technological changes uh, can even uh, make even the most qualified workers okay look obsolete in course of time in due course of time uh, obsolete in the sense they are not most um, they are not uh, working more effectively okay now at present okay so this is because with the changes in technology and work methods job requirements also changes okay depending upon the changes in the work environment or else the technology okay so as a result even those who are otherwise adequately qualified persons also they have to undergo training in use of new methods and techniques okay so therefore refresher training helps the workers in learning new methods and skills so this enables them to refresh their memory of things which they had learned a long time ago also okay so this is not at all due to changes in demand for goods and services uh, or many new jobs have to be created 
and to master these refresher training becomes necessary okay all these aspects are um, all these leads to the refresher training okay so refresher training even though they are qualified workers okay so they need to take training okay so why because means due to the changes in technologies work methods job requirements okay all these leads to the refresher training and now coming to the last one apprenticeship okay so apprenticeship means so it is one of the we can say that it is one of the oldest forms of training and and this uh, worker is uh, appointed on as an apprentice means he is placed under the change of a qualified senior worker okay so the apprentice learns the methods of works by observing and assisting his senior so by observing only a keen observation will be made by the junior worker on the senior worker according by through observation he will learn the work from the senior okay so in skilled trades okay like um, uh, skilled trades like uh, apprenticeship training is the uh, most common thing okay like electronics uh, machine men plumbers okay usually they learn their jobs through such trainings okay and coming to uh, off the job training okay so all these are the on the job training and now we have to go for off the job training so off the job training means it is also known as external training okay so previously on the job training means it is internal training now off the job means external training means it is outside the organization training is given outside the organization okay so that is why it is known as the off the job training okay means mm, the training methods are designed and intended to impart training by supplying required knowledge and skills to employees away from the job and workplace okay so these methods remove employees from stress and ongoing demand of workplace okay and enable them to focus fully on learning new experiences why because they they don't have uh, no stress means so workplace will be one uh, at one place okay training will be at another place so therefore this work pressure will not be there in this training place okay they are free from the workplace ongoing demand of workplace okay so this enables the training okay to focus fully on the learning new experiences okay there are many techniques okay uh, which have been developed over a period of time over, for providing off the job training okay so some of them are uh, lectures so lectures means lectures are knowledge based management development method so basically lectures lectures means imparting knowledge okay knowledge based management so most commonly used method of training is the lecture method only so under this method a sp subject specialist is either invited from outside or from within the organization to deliver a lecture on specific subjects okay why because to increase the knowledge of the participants so the specialist delivers lectures okay uh, which allows the participants to share with him the specialized knowledge okay and these lectures case studies group discussions and audio visual aids are used to explain the knowledge and skills to the trainees so the experts the specialists they use the audio visual aids group discussions case studies okay all these aspects while they are uh, explaining okay while they are giving lectures okay so this technique is considered more suitable for imparting the theoretical knowledge okay on principles generalizations and concepts related to job performance to participants etc okay so we can say that lectures is it provides it imparts knowledge in theoretical aspects theoretical frameworks by analyzing the case studies group discussions audio video uh, visual aids okay etc coming to second type okay conferences so conference means the conference technique is regarded as improved form of the lecture technique okay so this is an improved form of lecture technique conferences are so conferences provide an occasion for formal interchange of views among the employees of different enterprises so that is known as a conference 
so under where the conference will be held under under the such conference from different enterprises the the employees will be there there they will explain they will exchange interchange their views and opinions on a certain aspect okay so we can say that proposals or ideas developed by various speakers okay are thrown open for discussion open for discussion among the participants okay and a consensus okay is reached taking into account the various viewpoints will be expressed there okay if we see in lecture method okay it emphasizes on one way communication only lecture means why because a subject expert he will delivers the knowledge okay and the participants will listen to that lectures the theoretical frameworks the principles regarding the subject okay but coming to conference means here we will see it provides uh, opportunity of two way communications okay means many organizations have adopted guided discussion type of conferences for meaningful interaction among participants then only they can impart knowledge skills abilities to participants okay so now coming to case study so what does case study means case study means it is a method of training okay uh, method of training in the sense uh, here the analysis will be made on a particular problem okay uh, they will take a case or some cases uh, which uh, which have uh, some problems okay so these participants will analyze that case okay so express their view point on those aspects to identify the problems and try to solve them so by doing this case study analysis okay it increases the power and abilities of the employees for identifying the problems developing the alternative situations okay with the help of other participants also so case study method of training aims to develop analytical abilities among the trainees so by studying a case study okay they will analyze the situations where the problem is okay so they will see the alternative situations to solve those problems and finally they will solve the problem okay here different view points will be collected from different participants from different view points they will analyze okay so that is a case study now coming to syndicate method so syndicate method means it is a method of development that has been introduced by administrative staff college okay at henley on thames okay there they have invented this type of syndicate method so this syndicate method is quite useful in developing analytical skills okay in participants and also not only the analytical skills but also approach for understanding others also so if conducted properly so syndicate method means the behavioral the attitudes of others also should be analyzed properly so for that purpose this syndicate method is used okay so basically this was introduced by the administrative staff college okay so next one is simulation tra training so simulation training means uh, we can say that simulation means it uh, includes range of techniques in which trainee employee has to act and reflect okay business in contrived real situations as to learn decision making or how to work in groups okay so that is known as a simulation means if we want to say um, he will uh, act okay act on different situations okay so and it shows or else it resembles it reflects the business in contrived real situations now how the situation is going on in a business so regarding to that trainee employees will act they will show the business growth or else how the business is going on the resemblance of the business will be shown in the form of an act okay so that is known as simulation training here so in fact these techniques seeks to duplicate we can say duplication of the real work okay real work settings in which he has to work so we can say in simulation training so how they will act so what are the methods they will act the employee training training will act means so for example we we can see these types uh, what are those means simulation okay simulation training includes 
role play uh, role play sorry this is not paying role playing business games in basket methods and case study okay so these are the four simulation training methods that can be seen in this okay so first one if we go for role playing so role playing means it is a training method under which participants assume certain roles okay and enact them spontaneously under classroom conditions so it tends to emphasize feelings and relationships between people so role play role play means the, uh, they will take the character for example uh, how the director okay how the director of the organization behaves how he solve the problems how how he takes the decisions so how he behaves okay the body language okay so all these can be uh, acted okay by the trainees so the role play how they are going to do so that is known as the uh, role play okay so uh, the role play depends basically on the feelings and the relationships between the people okay so it emphasizes it stresses basically on feelings and relationships between the people so that is a role play under simulation training now coming to business games so in business games what do they do what do the uh, trainee employees do so the participants operate as members of comp competing team okay so they will act as the competing team members of a competing team means each rival team has to make decisions in such a way as to get more benefit at the cost of the other team so that is known as business game game okay means they will act so simulation training means here we are duplicating the real work settings so here duplicating the real work settings means here they are acting so here they will have a two rival teams okay so how they behave so how they take decisions okay so in such a way that uh, one should be benefited on the other team likewise how they will take the decisions so all these can be seen in business games the participant operates as members of competing team okay so coming to another one in basket method so this is also another training aspect so all these are how uh, all these means how they will act okay they will act in the training period in such how to do role play they will uh, show in a act how to do business games okay business games with in real world they, they will have many competitors so how they will take the decisions okay so likewise in this business game part also they will play uh, uh, by uh, acting with two teams okay likewise in basket method also so in basket in basket method means uh, of training aims at developing decision making skills on part of the trainee employee okay so he is provided the trainee employee is provided with a basket full of materials okay so that is why it is known as in basket means basket is full of materials what materials means phone calls meetings complaints to be handled orders to be given and other demands of the job okay so how he should perform okay so even though uh, he is provided with all these aspects so how he will handle all these aspects so this is known as in basket method how the trainee responds how the trainee takes decisions so his skills will be seen here okay likewise he has to handle the entire situation as effectively as possible okay so this is known as the simulation training and coming to the last one is sensitivity training so what does sensitivity training means so uh, here if we see in this previous one in simulation training we will have altogether four okay one is uh, role playing business games in basket methods and the last one is case study also is there but in previous case here here we have studied about the case study okay so those four comes under simulation training now coming to sensitivity training so sensitivity training means this is a very important aspect in the off the job training okay and this is also very important uh, topic regarding exam point of view also so especially you have to learn about what is the sensitivity training okay so this is also called as uh, t group training okay t group training 
means the purpose of providing sensitivity training is to develop the capabilities okay and improve the behavioral pattern of the employees especially with regard to views feelings and actions of others also okay so that is known as the sensitivity training means developing okay improving capabilities and also at the same time the behavioral pattern of the employee also okay so behavior in the sense the personal aspects attitudes feelings views actions okay all can be seen so it helps the employees to learn more about themselves their weaknesses and also the emotions to develop self awareness okay that's how they react to others and also how others react to them so all this can be seen in sensitivity training so sensitivity training helps employees in improving their behavior finally we can say that they it improves sensitivity training improves the behavioral aspect for establishing more cordial and effective interpersonal relations with others why because they have to work with many employees in the organization with co-workers they have to work supervisors managers okay all these people they have to work with their co-workers so definitely they have to enhance their uh, effective interpersonal relations okay they have to increase their cordial relations with other people who are working in the organization and coming to this uh, t group or sensitivity training it involves interaction between members of small informal or unstructured group also okay so it basically it uh, depends on the small informal groups okay and sensitivity training is given to small group of people uh, it is known as a t group okay capital t t group so instructor here he starts session without any specific agenda he will not have any specific agenda okay who means the instructor or the trainer okay so and he acts only as a facilitator okay he induces participants to interact and make necessary discussions okay so he plays the role of facilitator okay means he uh, induces the participants to interact them okay and make necessary discussions also okay a proper discussions and the trainee employees are granted full liberty here okay for expressing their viewpoint emotionally rationally and in outburst manner also okay so here they are very free to express their views and opinions regarding the organization or regarding the work environment okay and the trainee employee here learns from behavior so sensitivity means it is more um, it emphasizes on the behavioral pattern so therefore uh, employee learns behavior of other participants also okay on the assumption that what they must have felt had uh, they been in the position of others so each and every aspect he analyzes the behavior of uh, him and at the same time he analyzes the behavior of the other persons also okay so this is all about the sensitivity training so and sensitivity training involves uh, very uh, it is a very important aspect and at the same time um, it 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 uh, evaluates okay uh, positive both positive consequences and at the same time negative consequences also can be studied under sensitivity training okay like uh, uh, yes uh, for positive consequences means sensitivity training results in more uh, supportive behavior more sensitive people and more considerate managers likewise okay and communication is also improved a lot in this way because it is informal small or uh, small uh, okay small uh, uh, informal uh, groups okay so that's why it will be communication will be easy and training program also it is very open and self understanding okay why because uh, these people are uh, free to express their views and opinions and if we go for negative consequences of this sensitivity training means so excessive exposure of uh, inner emotions why because the total sensitivity training is dependent upon the behavioral pattern of the people okay so therefore more uh, inner emotions will be emphasized Ex excessive exposure will be on emotions psychological imbalances okay so the definitely there will be it will be a negative consequence and the leader or trainer also he also forced to uh, his views on the participants also okay he uh, enforces okay his views on participants 
so and at the same time it is doubtful uh, if a sensitivity training could lead to any uh, real on the job improvement or not also okay likewise but the objective of sensitivity training means uh, to make participants uh, increasingly aware of okay uh, and to uh, sensitive to emotional reactions expressions in themselves and others why because uh, organization is ongoing process uh, with employees okay and these employees should have a good relation with other people also who are working along with them so they definitely uh, awareness should be there a sensitive uh, reaction towards emotional uh, uh, aspect should be there so the objective of sensitivity training is touching the behavioral patterns of the people and to increase the ability of participants to perceive how to perceive the other persons okay to learn from consequences of their actions how to uh, see okay likewise how to look other actions other feelings okay uh, at the same time to develop a achievement of behavioral effectiveness okay in participants and uh, to stimulate the clarifications and develop personal values and goals okay all these can be uh, objectives of the sensitivity training so the basic aspect of sensitivity training means it is related to the emotional aspects uh, or else the behavioral pattern of the people analyzing okay so sensitivity means it is a small group of people it is known as a t group instructor will be there trainer will be there okay but uh, he doesn't have any specific agenda he acts as a facilitator as a catalyst or as a facilitator and he induces these persons these people to interact with them okay and take necessary good decisions proper decisions so here the people are also having their full liberty for expressing their views and opinions okay emotionally rationally okay and in out burst manner also so this is all about the sensitivity training and after all these uh, types of methods like vestibule on job off job okay now we'll go for the selection of appropriate uh, training methods okay so selection of appropriate training methods as we see the above methods are the uh, various training methods used for imparting training for operatives and for managers uh, like on the job training methods are used for training the rank and for uh, uh, file workers in a factory and if we go for the off the job training methods means they are used mainly for uh, training executives and the selection of these off the job or on the job or okay uh, an appropriate training method it fully depends upon these six factors okay so what are those means nature of problem area so if, if every organization depend upon depending upon its uh, requirement okay it has to analyze the problem okay where the problem is there okay where the organization's growth is hindering so it has to analyze the problem and there according to the requirement it should go for the on the job training or off the job training so, uh, so according to that the organization should decide so it depends purely on the problem area where the problem is resided according to that we have to go for the training different met methods of trainings okay now level of train is in the organization's hierarchy also so we have to select depending upon the levels of the organization we have different levels of organization like top level middle level middle, middle level and the lower level of organization so it is an hierarchical organization and the hierarchy also it depends upon the levels of the organization according to that we have to go for the training methods and coming to ability to hold and arouse the interest of trainees during the training period so this is also uh, we have to see so means we we have to see that the training gives or else the training benefits the employee also we have to create an interest in the trainees otherwise the training will become meaningless why because they will uh, see they will not these trainees will not take seriously the training okay they will uh, uh, they will feel or or else they will take the training casually so if if at all they take uh, casually means it will not result in the productive way for the organization so the method of ability to hold and arouse the interest of trainees during the training period so which method creates the interest okay to trainees so we have to see that okay and coming to another one 
availability of competent trainers also okay so if at all there were uh, lack of trainers means so definitely we have to go for within the organization and we have to give within the organization training only not for off the job training so it depends upon the competent trainers also so by having a competent trainers then we can select the method of training coming to availability of finance also so finance in the sense for example if we want to go for off the job training means definitely a separate place should be there okay separate infrastructure facility should be there separate instructors should be there trainees should be there a uh, plant and machinery tools okay all should be provided there so definitely that this incurs some investment so if at all this the organization is not in a position to uh, afford this investment means definitely it should not go for the off the job training facilities okay so likewise if at all the uh, organization has the ability to afford the investment means depending upon the requirement okay training it can go for the off the off the job training so likewise depends upon the ability of financing also and the last one is time also so time also means a lot okay why because uh, if we go for off the job training means so the training place will be different from the actual place so therefore it takes some time to go this employee and work there okay so why because he is already the employee who is who is working in this place and he has to afford some time to here or work here also okay so therefore uh, time will be wasted so therefore we have to see the time also availability of time uh, what is the working hours of the uh, employee working in actual position actual organization so what is the training uh, hours that were uh, given to him okay all this depends upon the working times that is going to be spent by the worker or trainee in the organization so all these aspects should be analyzed while we are selecting a training method okay so that's it for this